Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a color with me with Op Art and Neo Geo Inspirations. If you're wondering what Op Art is, it is a style of visual art that uses optical illusions. And Neo Geo is an art movement that utilizes geometric abstraction that emerged in the 80s. Here's the coloring page I will be using. You can follow along with me or you can create your own creation. If you follow along, the link is in the description for this page. So first, we are going to be using a red colored pencil and I'm going to be slowly shading in this area. And I'm going to be starting with this outer edge of the op art coloring page to start the effect of making this an optical illusion. And as you can see, there are different areas that you can color in. You can color in the places in between the lines or you can color in the white spaces that aren't in between the lines. But for this video, I'm going to be coloring in between the lines. In order to make some areas lighter, I'm going to be using a white color pencil to lighten those areas up. As you noticed on the left side of the coloring page, I used a lot more pressure, which in turn made the coloring pencil darker. However, on the right side of this coloring page, I'm putting down less pressure to make a lighter effect. And this is to make a sort of optical illusion where from left to right, it turns dark to light. Now I am using my orange colored pencil and I am using it to go up into where the red was to make a boundary between the red and the orange. I don't want there to just be a block of red and a block of orange colored pencil. So by putting the orange colored pencil up into where the red was, this will create more of a boundary. Now I am on the bottom of the square that surrounds the coloring page and I'm putting down a lot of pressure to make this part darker, but I'm slowly letting up on the pressure to make the drawing gradually lighter. As you can see, now I am trying to make the boundary more gradual between the orange and the red colored pencil near the bottom of the coloring page. So I'm putting more red into some of the orange spaces and more orange into some of the red spaces. This creates a sort of medium value in between the red and the orange. And then I also like to blend that out with some white colored pencil. Whenever you feel like I may be going too fast or I am skipping some steps, that is because I leave some parts out purposely so this video is more condensed. So please feel free to pause whenever you need extra time for your drawing. Now it's time to get started on the interwoven rings. I am using a blue colored pencil and I am filling in the ring that is second down from the top and this is on the right side of the coloring page. I'm not applying as much pressure because again I'm trying to create this dark to light effect and since we are on the right side of the coloring page this is the lighter side of the coloring page. Additionally something relevant to note is that I am using a blue that is right near the orange that I filled in. And that is because those are complementary colors, which means if you think the orange or the blue is being too overpowering, you can pair those two together to create a more balanced look to your piece. Now, directly adjacent from that ring on the right side, I am filling in this ring with green on the left side. And as you can see, green is a complementary color to red, which was what was filled in on this side. And I'm also putting down more pressure as I apply my pencil because this side is the darker side, the left side. It's also relevant to note that the reason I'm calling this Neo Geo and Op Art is because the coloring page is Op Art, but the color palette I'm using is more Neo Geo and the shapes where they are very geometric are also Neo Geo. Now one ring down from the green ring that we previously filled in, I am making this a dark blue and this is on the left side. 
Now directly across on the right side of the coloring page, I am going to be filling that in with some green. It's relevant to note that I am purposely making these patterns a little bit wacky and not the same and not even. And that is because in op art, I want things to be an illusion. And so every time you look at this piece, you will see a different pattern. Once you might see alternating colors, another time you might see a mirroring effect. And it just depends on how you look at things. And I think that's what makes this style of art very interesting. Now the ring that is connected between these two rings on the left side that are the second and third down, I'm going to be starting out with a light coat of green and slowly creating a transitional effect into some light blue. Now as I'm creating the gradient effect, I'm putting some blue near where the green is and I'm putting some green near where the blue is and blending this out with some white colored pencil to make a transitional value between the green and the blue. Repeat this gradient effect in the ring directly below the one we just did. Now I'm on the right side and I'm going to be doing the same ring position that we just did on the left side. And this time I'm just going to be filling it in with a light coat of blue. Also just to note, when I was saying the rings will go from dark to light, I was meaning that just the bordering rings, not these rings in the middle. Now for the ring directly below this one on the right side, use a light coat of green. Now on the rows of rings that are third down, I am going to be doing a pattern where I do gradient blue, gradient blue. So in these two rings in the middle, the first is going to be blue and then the one to the right is going to be gradient. Now I'm direct center in the middle after you paused and did those rings and I am filling in the ring in the direct center with yellow. Then I'm going to gradually get darker as I fill in the rings that are shaped like squares that are sort of tilted and I'm going to make those gradually darker. Now I'm going to be creating a cohesive pattern at the four points of the coloring page. Each of these rings are going to be a very dark blue, so this means apply a lot of pressure. Also, since these are at the border where I wanted to create an effect that goes from dark to light, these rings will not apply to that those rings that go from dark to light will only be the middle three on each side. Now I'm at the left hand top corner and I'm also using a lot of pressure and applying my blue to the paper. Now I'm repeating the same process on the bottom right ring.
Now it's time to create another pattern. I'm on the top border of this coloring page and I am going to be coloring all of these rings in between the two blue rings on the borders green. And I'm also going to gradually get lighter as I move towards the right on each ring. Also repeat this process on the bottom row of rings, but instead of using green, I use blue. Now that all of the top rings are colored in, I'm going to get started on these triangular shapes. For each shape, I'm first going to put down a light layer of orange colored pencil. Now I'm using a yellow colored pencil and I'm blending these two colors together to make a very light orange. This technique of combining different colors to create different shades is a very sophisticated way to make your drawing or your coloring page look more professional. I'm then going to repeat the same process with the remaining three triangular shapes left. Now this next section is really up to your discretion. Anywhere where there is an overly large amount of green, I'm going to put some red colored pencil on an unfilled in ring surrounding it. And when there is an area where there is a lot of blue, I'm going to then put some orange where the blue is really overpowering. And as I mentioned before, this is a way to make one color less strong. And that is because they are complementary colors, red and green and blue and orange. They help balance each other out. For example, let's take this ring right here in the bottom left corner. I can see that there is a lot of green right where I am drawing, so I put some red. Now I see some blue and I am going to then gradually transition into orange. Now again here there is a lot of blue and I am going to then put a layer of orange. It's important that you use this technique with the remaining rings that have not been filled in yet that are in the middle of the coloring page. Now that all of my rings have been filled in, it's time for some touch-ups. So as you can see, I went out of the lines in many places and that is completely fine. However, there is some ways to remove these excess places of colored pencil. So I am using my kneadable eraser and I am erasing gently at these areas. Then I am going over those areas that I just erased with a white colored pencil to sort of fade this area where it went into the white of the page. Complete this step up to your discretion wherever you think there needs to be some touch-ups. Now for some more touch-ups, I'm going in with my red colored pencil and applying more pressure to the areas where I felt like there wasn't enough pressure. And I'm doing this to make a gradual change from dark to light values and also add more depth to my drawing. Also, I like using my blending stump to blend in any areas where I think the coloring pencil was a little bit uneven. Now the coloring page is finally finished. Look at your final piece and reflect on what you enjoy. 
One thing I love in particular about this piece is that there are so many different patterns that you can see. I can see places where I used darker values and places where I use lighter values. I can also see how I gradually went light to dark or dark to light in certain areas. And I also love how I mirrored the patterns on each side and how I created a cohesive pattern at the borders. There are so many other things that I can point out, but that would take a long time to do. So that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And please comment down below what you'd like to see next. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.